This episode of the Guna Ramble is sponsored by the new sporting betting app called Bookie. That's B-O-O-K-E-E. Sign up using the promo code podcast, deposit and bet £10 in multiple bets for a free £10 bet. Please bet responsibly. Hi and welcome to another edition of the Guna Ramble. It's been a while, but we've got a right panel here for you today. And we're going to do something different. But let me first introduce my guests. We've got regulars Dave. Hello, thank you. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very well, very well. And Woz? Good evening, mate. How are you doing? You alright? Yeah, very well. Super. And, and we've got the main man from uh, the Arsenal media player, does all his tactics on the radio. It's Adrian Clark. <laughs> Hello, chaps. You're right. And Adrian, 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 we promise not to cut you off like Talksport did to you the other day. Thought that was uh, <laughs> that thought, rate, thought, thought that was very that naughty from double. Alan Brazil, actually. <laughs> You're having some right ding dongs with Warren with uh, Joey Barton the last few weeks. Oh yeah, no, I, I quite enjoy my little little battles with Joey. <laughs> I think he deliberately tries to disagree with me just to to yeah, provoke definitely. an argument. But yeah, he's, he, actually, I've got to say, um, I didn't think I would got on all right with him but but i found him to be all right so far he's he's, he's yeah. been he's been pretty nice to me uh off air even if, even if he hasn't on air so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? i've been very surprised with him as well though i haven't found myself absolutely hating him after that javinio incident when he got you know when it, or did, was it he got drb sent off and, and all that mm. sort of stuff and I, I just i've always hated him but actually he hasn't come across as bad as i thought he would he's an articulate he's a very articulate chap actually. yeah, yeah mm. depressingly so yeah. <laughs> right but enough about him let's let's talk let's talk arsenal so we're going to do things a little bit different today we're going to, as all three of you like your tactics and you're always tweeting or, or blogging and, and podcasting about kind of, you know, where you think players should play and, 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 and how they should play that. I just wanted to focus on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to pretend we're in a cup final tomorrow. It could be either Europa, it could be the FA Cup, it could think big, it could be the Champions League. You know, let's just have a little bit of a dream. But we're with our current squad. You three are the managers. And what you're going to do is you're going to name your starting eleven, and we'll go from the goalkeeper onwards. And just just explain why. So, firstly, I'll, I'll I'll come to all three of you and ask you your formation, and then we'll start from the keeper. But just just give us a bit of insight about why you think you know certain players should play where, and maybe give a few examples of of what you've seen this season that you've really liked, or, or potentially what they've done at other clubs or internationally what that you've liked, and just you know just just so people understand what you're saying. Okay, so firstly, formations. I'm going to always come to you, Adrian, first, because let's be honest, it's you that we want to hear. We've just got the other two just as a bit of a backing. <laughs> backing <singers. laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, but so, that's Adrian. A bit harsh. You, haven't, you haven't heard what I've got to say yet. Well, you, might, that, you might think, well, that's a load of rubbish. Well, that, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll review that comment at the end, <laughs> shall we? Um, but okay, so what, what, for, for, for the, the team at the moment, the club at the moment, mm. with the 25 players or so, what what is the ideal Arsenal formation? Do you think? Yeah, look. I, first of all, I, I do. I quite like the fact that we can flip between three at the back and four at the back. I, I, I'm I'm happy with that scenario because I think it's important to to be able to do both. Um, hand on heart, I think I don't know if we have got a strong enough core in terms of centre halves and and defensive central midfielders to go with four at the back and just a two-man central midfield. I think that against the the easier opposition, especially when we're at home, we can go with 4-2-3-1. It's not a problem. But when we're up against the very best, I worry. Um, Centre-half has been a problem position all season. I don't think any of the centre-halves have actually really excelled consistently. They've all struggled. And in central midfield, I think we'll probably all accept that we haven't 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 been particularly strong defensively, particularly away from home. But uh, you put me on the spot. So I, <laughs> even though I I feel that that three at the back is is maybe the formation that that works that, that balances us out nicely. I think at the moment I would go with um, four at the back, three in midfield because I, I really do think that we. 
we need a third body in there, especially in a cup final against against top quality opposition. Um, so I would go for a four three two one, and I think that, okay. that in that particular formation we'll get our key players in the okay. in the positions that they like to play in. Okay. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll get on to Convince who, me. We'll get to who. Yeah, me too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave, what about you then? Uh, well, let, what would you have picked before you were convinced by Adrian? <laughs> oh, crikey. Well, no, I, I totally agree um, with everything Adrian said, but also I also agree that given a cup final when you've got to go for it, um, I probably mm. would play four at the back. But I do accept the point that, you know, without having an out and out, Top quality defensive midfield player. We look, we look frail uh, in that formation. I mean, you know, like but in when, it, when I say a cup final, I mean, you know, uh, big games, a cup final, yeah. even going to Old Trafford in the league at the end of April. That sort of, you know, those big games. That's that's kind of what I mean by a cup final. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I to be honest with you, I think I would. Yeah, I mean, I would probably go the four three three right now. Uh, I do agree with Adrian that we need three in midfield. Um, I'm not sure how I would, how I would form the front three. Whether, um, I would, I think we could probably go four, three, one, two and just go for it. Okay. But uh-huh. I'm not sure that would get all our best players on the yeah. pitch. Yeah. So I'm not sure how I'd, you know, when we get, get to the people, by yeah. the time we get to the front three, You've I would decide time, whether it's a two, it? one yeah. or a one, five, two. Five, yeah, five. but I think I agree with Adrian that I would okay. go with a four and a three. Absolutely. Okay. What's... Right now. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense, the solidifying of the centre of the park and everything. I'm just thinking in my head before we go on to players. I mean, me personally, I love making the pitch as big as possible. I, I really want to see us use every inch of that grass. I want us to retain width. And, and when I look at our squad, I mean, personally, we talk about the strength throughout the middle of the spine of the team. But I just think that a lot of that is helped by balance and and finding a way of retaining that. And when, when you look at the centre forwards we've got available to us, I'm really, like Dave said, inclined to try and get two up there. But I'll switch it up a little bit. And then this may leave us slightly exposed, but there is sort of the freedom of movement. I'd probably go for a 4-2-2-2, two, 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 in a sense. So Blimey. you'd have the two, two central midfielders, the two a little bit wider, a bit further ahead, but they've got the freedom to drop in and, and help us a free. And, and when the ball... Balls on the other wing, and, and we, we move fluidly. And then the two two centre forwards that we we clearly know, I think we would all choose as in front too. But mm-hmm. I think that that is a very aggressive uh, approach, but used in the correct way and and, and the correct balance, it, it could possibly work. But I mean, the four the four three two one, like Adrian said, we've seen it recently. Wenger played it, didn't he? The mm. sort of Christmas tree approach, and it mm. and it was great to watch. And we managed mm. to get. Jack of Wilshire and Ramsey in, but I just um, we're going to talk players in a minute. But I just yeah. for me, I want to I want to try and retain the width. I want to try and use as much grass as possible and, and, and give that out ball to for the big switch and then and then have a player dropping in as well. So that I, mm. I'd be inclined to try that. But okay. that, that might okay. be just my mad attacking mental world. <laughs> uh-huh. All right. Well, we'll come back to you. You can you can adapt. You know, during the sort of reminds me of the ni- ni- it's sort of like the ninety seven ninety eight side where you had Ray Parler normally on the right, but obviously because Overmars was so he dropped in aggressive yeah. and effectively became a front three every time Overmars you know went forward that Parler yeah. would sort of shuffle back in with Betty and Vera. Yeah, it worked yeah. very it's well a, back then. It's a formation. It's a formation I really like as well. Um, I've got to say, I, I would love Arsenal Wenger to find a way. To get Lacazette and Obama Yang in together, obviously there's a three-five-two is a possibility. But then you're thinking, where where does Mkhitaryan fit into it? Um, but I like it. I just think we we need a different personnel to make that really work. You probably need two really strong defensive-minded players to sort of hold the four in the middle if you're going to go with a, a four-four-two of sorts. But yeah, fascinating to find out which names yeah. we slot into that formation. Okay, so we're going to start start you know with the goalkeeper. I mean, it, it's it's a no-brainer to some. Some are actually now starting to go the other way. Petacek has made mistakes. We think of that Brighton game, and and you know we think of others. His kicking has been suspect. Swansea away, we remember. So you know, but then you saw Ospina in the week against uh, France and Olivier Giroud, and he just. You know, a fairly basic error. So, 
Adrian, starting with you, for that cup final or that big game, who would your goalkeeper be? <laughs> well, I don't, I, don't, I don't love the notion of cup keepers, I've got to say. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I so feel... does a pet check. <laughs> no, well, exactly. Uh, and, and, I, and I do feel now that all our eggs are in the Europa League basket, if you let me digress, I, I think clearly uh, he's, got, he's picking his strongest eleven for the Europa League now. And cl- clearly, even though he's, the, the promise has been made to David Ospina, that, that I think the best eleven w- would feature Petr Cech. So, so I, in a way, I'd quite, I'd quite like him to swap. Um, yeah, I thought yeah. Ospina to maybe get some games in, in the Premier League between now and the end of the season um, to keep him sweet and maybe get Petr Cech involved in, in the cup. But, but that that's not the point of the discussion, I guess. That I, I would go for Czech. I think he's the superior keeper all round still. Um, even though the gap's definitely closed. What what I will say in Czech's defence, and yes, he has made mistakes, but I just, I, just I, I feel that he has been a little bit unnerved by what's gone on ahead of him yeah. in terms of the centre-back um, issues we've had. Um, you know, a lot of individual mistakes. Mm. The team's been very vulnerable. Uh, I just feel that he has at times tried to make up for it and, and has maybe made decisions that he wouldn't uh, used to have made um, because he's trying to almost second guess what the defenders are doing and, and whether the, the shots can be blocked, who's going to pick who up. I, I, I just feel he's maybe been slightly unnerved by the by the lack of top quality defending this season. So, mm-hmm. so that's what I say in his defence. Um, <coughs> That's fair. Gaps That's closed, fair. but yeah. gaps closed. But I, I still give check the nod. Mm. Okay, Dave. Yeah, no, I would. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think either of them should be our goalkeeper next season. But picking a cup final team mm. right now, I would definitely go with the seniority of Petr Cech and the communication. Uh, you know, with yeah. events oh. and Petr Cech. But what would help either of them, to be honest with you? Is uh, not that it's going to happen, but if I were the manager and it were a cup final, <laughs> I would be training all week, not using zonal marking <laughs> to, to help our uh, to help whoever the keeper is, because I don't think I don't think the way we defend using the zonal uh, zonal marking is helping any keeper that plays for Arsenal, quite frankly. Oh. But yes, I would go with Petr Cech as well. Adrian, what do you think about zonal marking as opposed to Mads? Uh, oh, well, I, my my personal preference is, is 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 a kind of a mix, a bit of a hybrid. Is, is what I like. So I think I, I, I'm quite old school in, in terms. Of, I wasn't a defender, so I have to make that point. So, so I don't have personal <laughs> experience. I don't have personal experience of being a great marker. Um, so anyone that saw me play will think, "Hang on, you were terrible <laughs> at that." Um, but anyway, the I, I would like to see, obviously what we have seen is is um, Shkodran Mustafi previously to that m- murder attacker effectively picking up the the most dangerous player. Yeah. But he man marks. Everyone else is kind of zonal. I personally would probably go with two or three man markers um, for the for the main area of threats and to stop them uh, from getting a good run on on defenders. Because what what teams do if they know that one player is being man marked, that they, they use him as a decoy, and the two other big men will no. then get a get a clear run, and, and that's been an issue. So see, I'd go for two or three man markers and the rest zonal. Um, so I don't uh-huh. think zonal per se is bad. I yeah. just think that um, I prefer defenders to take responsibility for, for players. Huh. Interesting. Was back to the goalkeeper? Yes. Yeah, mate, I, I agree with both, of them, yeah. both of them, to be fair. I mean, Petr he's been there, done it, he's got the experience. I just think it's an interesting point that we're talking about what's happening in front of him. It's not, yeah, yeah. not for me, just the quality of the players. I think it's more, like I said, a, a consistent balance in the side. I, I mean, how many times have we played the same two centre backs in a row over the season, or the same three, and it, it's constantly changing in front of Petr Cech and Ospina, mm-hmm. to be fair. And it, is, it must become quite difficult because time and time again, you, you see breakdowns in communication, and, it, and it, you need that. When we talk about the best side, you, all, you can name their spine every week. All the sides that win the league, you know, even, even Leicester, when you were saying that that yeah, side yeah. had the same spine, and, and the keeper grew to, to love them players, if you know what I mean, and, and they knew. They just knew, and it, it, everything was natural. But sometimes I just feel it, with Czech, not not any fault of his own, and yes, he isn't the keeper he used to be. But sometimes it seems a bit more difficult to him to gain that that consistency and and that sort of combination with the with the defence, and and also even his distribution at times. He's, the players are changing all the time, so he, he sort of gets a bit lost in transition. But yeah, I mean, out of the two, I do like David Ospina, by the way. I think he's a fantastic shot stopper, and um, 
Yeah. yeah. Although size isn't on his side, there have been yeah. a lot of good short keepers over the years, but I do, I do like Dave off Spina, but, um, yeah, I'd personally have to go to Petacek. Okay, fair. So that's decision made there. Petacek starts in our make believe cup final. Uh, um, <laughs> Adrian, the back, I think you all went for back fours, didn't you, in the end? Mm. Um, so yeah. who's your, who's your back four? The back four, yeah, look, I think it's, it kind of picks itself because yeah. I don't think, I don't think anyone's really stuck their hand up and said, and said they're better. Than the four players that 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 I was sticking, in. I think all four have have made a lot, quite a few mistakes this season. Uh, Monreal would be my left back yep. um, ahead of Kalasenac, who wh- ha- worries me a little bit defensively. I, I think I think at times I was surprised he didn't he didn't feature more often, but but as a defender, Monreal is is way way above Kalasnach in my opinion. Um and then I would go for I would go for Kashioni and Mustafi as as a central defensive partnership with with Bayerin on the right. Um but you know I would my instructions would be to, yeah, yeah, to temper the temper the full backs enthusiasm to uh, <laughs> to par forward. I certainly wouldn't be telling them to both go forward at once. Huh. Um, I, in a way, I, I, you could almost sort of slide Monreal across to be a third centre back if when Bay, you know, when Bayer yeah, yeah. inevitably piles forward. But yeah, I think that's the best back four. Huh. I've been disappointed really with Kishioni this season. I, I, I don't know what his fitness situation is, but no. he just doesn't seem 100% fit to me. No. Um, and it's definitely affected his form. And, and Mustafi is either. Excellent, or, yeah. or or the opposite of excellent. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah he, there seems there doesn't seem to be much in between, unfortunately for him. Um, and and the big thing that's disappointing me with him is, is we've seen a repetition of the mistakes, particularly you know with 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 the passing out from the back. So so yeah, they've all got their sort of flaws, but but right now, and I, and I, and I genuinely think that that this summer. None of them can maybe feel completely sure that they, you know, won't lose their first yeah. choice position. Yeah. Um, but that's the back four I go for. I mean, that, that was just my follow up question there that those two centre backs, are they centre backs that need to play in the three for us to get the best out of them purely because of Kashelny's age now and maybe the mm. type of player Mustafi is? Or, or, or do you think they can play as a two? Um, oh, they can play as a yeah. two. They're, they're the best two we've got. I, 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 I don't. I think Chambers and Holden are, are quite at that level now. Yeah. We'll probably have to strike Murta Saka off the, yeah, off yeah. the list. Yeah. Um, I agree. Basically, the point I made at the start was that because I don't feel completely secure with any of the centre-backs, I almost I, I feel like a back three gives us more security. But, but at the same time, I feel that if you're going to... It's either three at the back or three in midfield. And, and at the yeah, moment, I would yeah. go with the three in midfield. Okay. And, and just try and rely on Kashioni and, and Mustafi um, to have one of their good days, um, mm. which they which they can have. I mean, they're both they're both good players. Yeah. But 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 yeah, this season I I don't think either has, has really had the campaign they were hoping. For. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, same four or? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's, yeah. It seems unfair that you're going to was last every time, but uh, <laughs> I feel. Um, Yes, I know I would. I would. I mean, I, I think Monreal's probably been a consistent performer over the last sort of, you know, several months, really. Yeah. Uh, he picks himself. Kalazanak, I agree. Uh, he's not a left back. He's a, although he played a back four in Germany, I think he's definitely, you know, in English football seems to be more comfortable as a wing back. So you're definitely Monreal, uh, definitely Bellerin and, and yes to the other two. But, uh, in answer to your question, no, I don't think it's a long-term partnership. No, I don't yeah. think Koscielny will be club captain next year. I don't think Koscielny will be uh, a regular next season. I think he'll be like Mertesack has been the last two years. Uh, and I think, do I think Chambers or, or Holding can step up? Um, I'd love to say yes. I'm not convinced I can say yes. Uh, I think Mustafi is a, is a world-class performer. Uh, and I think he'll, he'll look much, much better alongside a, a very big commanding um, English style uh, centre back. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, oh, a Virgil Van Dijk even size yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. player alongside Mustafi oh. would have been okay. impregnable uh, with both of them on their game. But that type of centre back, I haven't seen the young Greek lad. I don't know if Adrian has. Uh, I hear very no. good things, but I haven't seen him play. But no, I think uh, yeah, that is the back four that I would pick okay. definitely. Was yes, mate, and uh, 
Don't worry about me, Dave. I'm <laughs> so, soaking up all the knowledge from you two guys and then I can form my own opinion off of it. But yeah, personally, I, I can't disagree with the personnel. Um, I am a big fan of Kolasinac and although he hasn't shown his best form in England as of yet, I do think there's a lot more to come from him. But I just think regardless of personnel, it's more about the way Adrian touched on it, the way, the way we operate with the, with the four at the back because I mean, for a long, long time now, it seems that whatever formation we play with the four, we're so over reliant on the fullbacks to be an attacking outlet that the balance of the side just goes to pot. And, and, and like Adrian touched on, both fullbacks continuously far too high up the pitch. And, and they've targeted us, teams target us, the centre forward just moved into the channel, into the space behind. One of the centre backs is pulled out into an unnatural position and the other one's exposed. And then the whole team is sort of all over the shop. And for me, you're going to get that until you, you set that structure in stone and these players are, are properly instructed. Kolasinac clearly loves to bomb forward, as does Bellerin. So, for me personally, you manage that and you say, look, if, 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 if the time's right, the ball's on the other side of the pitch. If one goes, one stays and, and, and you yeah. work it like that. But Monreal, certainly, I mean, he's been a revelation, the guy. I mean, he come in always at the start of his career he wasn't the most loved person at the club but he's worked and worked and then he went in at centre back he'd done a little spell there and everyone was like that was in a four and everyone sort of realised he was starting to become good then he went back out to left back and he was untouchable and then he's gone centre back again in the three and then back to left back again so his versatility his intelligence he's not bad mate he's very good in the final third as well to be fair to him so he definitely starts and and with the two centre backs Huge fan of Mustafi. I think that he could be, he could be a leader. He talks so much on the park. He really, really does. He communicates a lot. But like you, like you touched on, Dave, having, having that, I do love Koscielny and, and he's been a fantastic servant for us. But I just think, wonder if the time's right for him to sort of hand over the mantle to, to someone, um, bigger. But Mustafi, I think with Mustafi, you need to simplify his game. He, he's a bit erratic. Almost David Luiz like, and and if you can try and sit him in there and say, don't panic, you're good on the ball, get back there, take the ball off the keeper, and then release to to Jack or whoever's playing in front of him through the park. He he could probably do a good job of it, and he he does does organise. I remember seeing him um, Stoke away earlier on in the season, and uh, he was talking to Ox in the first half, just constantly in his ear, helping him, and the right right wing back, he's talking, talking, talking. And I like that in the guy, and he's he's a World Cup winner, and he's going to go on to bigger and better things, I hope. But yeah. um. Yeah, and then Bellerin, for me, class. But again, he's been had a bit of dip and form, but he could go on and should go on to be one of the best in Europe. Yeah, I'm really interested, guys. Yeah, you're both, you're both big Mustafi fans. I, I think, I think he's definitely produced performances that, that, that will get people excited. He's, he, I think with him, I think you made, you made, the point you made was about simplifying his game is, is, is probably the most important point. I agree. He's a good passer from the back. When uh, he, he can clip balls from back to front really nicely, it's just when he he takes those gambles, he gets sucked in, doesn't he? He, get, he? he gets, gets sucked, sucked in. in. He gets rushes of rushes of blood. Yeah, and and I think he just needs to calm down. It's almost as if I mean he looks old, Mustafi, but he isn't. He isn't old, <laughs> is he? He's still relatively young, centre half, and I think there's a little bit of immaturity in his decision making. If he can nail that. There's definitely a player there, definitely. And, yeah, well, when, uh, yeah, when 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 Koscielny was playing alongside Mertesack, Mertesack as the senior player. You know, they're both. I think Koscielny's a better player, but Mertesack as the senior player and he's a talker. Mm. Mustafi's a junior player. It should be Koscielny doing the talking. Koscielny saying no, don't go hold. It should be mm. Koscielny doing that, but he doesn't. And it's a brilliant footballer, but he doesn't ever do the communication. Pretty similar in Mustafi needs though, someone to they? tell him. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty, pretty, pretty that's similar That's why in Mustafi needs like a big. Suppress. Yeah, he needs to play with a big dominant talker, you know, who talks as much as him, and that will, that would work. It would definitely work. I think he's a fantastic. <sighs> yeah, guys, I'm just going to move this on. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be talking about our centre backs all night. Um, <laughs> so, move st- back to you, Adrian. The next mm. lot. So, what, what was your formation? A four-two four, Christmas three, tree. Four-three-two-one. Okay. Four, yeah. Four, I think, three. I think so, who's moment, your three? Uh, the three. Look, I, again, I think probably picks yeah, itself. Quite self-explanatory. It? I go with what we what what worked against Milan. I think I think Xhaka. I I've been wanting Ramsey and Wilshire to play together for for, for so long now, um, and and I was, was really amazed when Arsene Wenger was sort of told about how long it had been 
since since they he'd started the pair of them and, it, and i think he was astonished himself and he said look no. it's not deliberate it's not deliberate on my part i haven't kept them uh kept them apart it's been quite freaky how few times he's been able to choose both um i just think we need a third body i think that that ramsey and jack wilshire are both better when they're looking forward um and i i like it when they when they do join in with the players ahead of them and in the three they've got more license to do that ramsey you can't control ramsey he will always power forward um in a two it, it's just too risky especially when you've you've only got Xhaka there so so yeah ramsey and wilshire either side of Xhaka, who I, I think is has been really good the last couple of games defensively he's switched on and he's done a lot of good covering his decision making his passing has been miles better that Xhaka can do that role uh, but too often even though I'm a big fan of his distribution I th- too often he just he just switches off he doesn't think like a defensive player oh, yeah. um, I mean, we could probably all pinpoint various goals this season where, where that's happened yes. um, so ultimately Xhaka probably isn't the man to, to play in that deep line position so it's probably a role we need to up, upgrade um, but for now yeah, Jack is okay. sitting with with those two either side. Okay, interesting. We'll go to you, Was first, just because Dave Dave has made me feel bad now, but <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> made me conscious. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I know you can talk all day and night about Ramsey and Shaka and, and Co, but briefly and frequently does. Yeah, and frequently mm. does. But briefly, just you know, yeah. uh, is it the same three for you? And and what would your instructions be? Well, I'm playing a two, aren't I? Oh, I'm sorry. A, okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm playing a four, two, two, two. 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 Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay, who but are you two? This is this is where it becomes a little bit silly because one of them two could could quite easily, and, and the way I see it, would drop in and, and make a three at times, which we've seen uh, Mesut do quite often this season. Come come a bit deeper to receive possession right, to start this. recycling. Play. Tell me your four then. Tell me your four. So you're two and okay, you're two. Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, for me, the two and. Like Adrian picked up on, I think Xhaka has improved massively recently defensively, but I believe this is again that like we spoke about earlier, simplifying his role. I don't I don't like to see Xhaka covering big distances. I don't like to see him running up and down like a headless chicken. He's he's just not built for it. He doesn't switch on quick enough, he gets lost in the game, he gets lost in transition. And, and chicken are a lot quicker. Yeah, bless him. But he, he <laughs> his his brain and and often this is where I talk about wit from retaining the wit because we see it. I mean, Everton away was a great example of it where we was utilising the wing backs, but Shaka was getting the ball and just looking up and just spraying a 40 yard pass, switch the emphasis of play just like that. And he's got the ability to do that. And, and from that position where he sits in with the football in front of him, the game in front of him, he can relax. He knows that he's got legs around him. And, and that's a great formation that Adrian Sam with the Christmas tree because it does give him the two. But I just feel that Ramsey, can do it, but he needs to be disciplined. He needs to be instructed and he needs to be forced to choose the time that is right. Now, with the other two players, Meza is m- the older and older he's getting, the more and more intelligent he's getting and the deeper and deeper he comes and, and starts creating play. And I love watching him just come in and pick it up and start moving the ball forward. And, and it gives the freedom for a bit of, bit of ro- movement and rotation. And the other guy for me would be Henrik Mkhitaryan because he seems to be more comfortable playing at number 10, a bit more central, but he's equally happy to retain width and he does actually retain width. And we've seen it already a few times at Arsenal where he's getting to the byline and cutting that ball back. And, and he, he's intelligent enough to, to give his starting position wide and stretch the game. So I think there's a bit of fluidity there. And like I said, it is a bit gung-ho, but if your fullbacks aren't being asked to re- provide the width and they're both sitting a bit deeper and there's a bit more balance in there and Jack has sat and you've got, Ramsey, Mkhitaryan and, and, and Ozil sort of rotating in and around and, and you've got your two centre forwards to, to sort of make runs off the cuff and wide, then that's, that's my thinking behind it and, and keeping it defensively solid. Ozil's not the best tackler in the world, but he, he can be intelligent enough to get in areas to, to make a difference a bit deeper. OK, interesting. Dave? I still can't decide it, even though you've given me a reprieve <laughs> in the next minute or so. Um, I I was I had in my mind a different three to Adrian, but Adrian okay. was quite convinced. I, I 
Who are your three before Jack. you? Well, no, no, I love Jack Wilshere so much, but I think in this instance, I I would probably I, I would probably have El Nenny just sitting in front of the back four and Shaka and Ramsey either side, to be honest, huh. um, just to allow Ramsey a lot a lot more license, and I would have Jack. Would you make the Niles? The would make the Niles get a shout there? Um. Not in the future, but you're talking about a cup final. Oh, yeah, now. yeah, true, um, true. Despite his limitations, you know, I, I, no, El Nenny's not going to walk into a top side in Europe, but he just, I just think he can just sit there and do that job very, very well, and he has done it on many occasions. I know Woz doesn't agree with that, but he just gets the ball, gives it simple, and he's just got boundless energy. Oh. And in that defensive midfield role, which I agree with Adrian 100%, we need to upgrade on Xhaka or El Nenny next season. But if you're going to play... You know, one of those three sitting, um, Shaka is a much better pass from the ball than an out and out defensive midfield player. And El Nenny could, would, would, would do that job if he was told. I'm not convinced that any of the other three would. So I would probably go with El Nenny, uh, with Shaka just to the left and, and Ramsey just to the right and, and have Jack, you know, able to come off the bench okay. in any of those three positions right. or to support strike. Yeah. Agent, yeah. thoughts on that or just? Yeah, no, look, both. Good points raised across the board. Mm. But on on uh, Was's team, I, I, look, it is bold and it's a great way to get two strikers into the <laughs> team. I, I just feel that you don't. It's want stupid, to... not bold. It's stupid. <laughs> what, you want, <laughs> inevitably, what would happen because we're playing a good, a good team, let's say in a, in a cup final. Inevitably, what would happen is that you end up with Urzel having to drop back into sort of track back and and play in the in the left back area at times, which is kind of exactly where you don't want him. Um, but I get that that you know uh, on occasion that could that could still work. I think that's what I'm saying about the midfield too. If we had, let's say, uh, Can Angolo Kante and, and Nemanja Matic, two uh, of last season. If we had those two in your formation, they are able to hold the middle ground and shunt across to either side to cover the wingers that don't get back particularly quickly, if you see what I mean. I just think that they're, they're sort of two machines. You need two real athletes in there to, to, to compensate for having two, two really bold... Uh, That's a, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the Brazilian box formation, isn't it? Um, so Dunga played in it and then created it, but he had, as you say, Adrian, he had Gilberto and, and Filippo Mella, didn't he? He had two just out-and-out, aggressive, steady, city mm. midfield players that allowed... I think it was Kaka, uh, Kaka or someone else just played ahead of them, didn't they? But, yeah, I mean, I think you do have to have two out and out holding midfield players to make it work. Yeah, that's what I think. And look, and, and, and in terms of, of, of Xhaka playing in the slightly more advanced position, it could work. I mean, I, I wasn't sold on it when it, I think it was at Swansea when, when he was asked to do that job. And he, he kind of got a bit carried away. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he was popping up, he was closing down strikers and, and really leaving his post. Um, I, yeah, it's something he can do, but again, I, I, he just needs no, to... I wasn't sort of saying more advanced, but I just said to the left. Yeah, the left exactly, and, exactly, yeah. I don't think he would be doing what Ramsey's doing. Of the three, Ramsey would be the one with the licence. Yeah, it's just... It, it would be El Nenny getting the ball, giving it to Shaka, and then Shaka sort of start and let yeah. Ramsey join the attack, I think, really. I really get what you're saying. I just feel that when Jack is told you're not the deepest man, I just feel he's got that inclination to go and press and close down really high at the pitch and, and then leave holes. It's just something. Yeah, just, he's just so eager. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, okay. But look, yeah, interesting. But, yeah, all right, let's move. I mean, just, just like my question today, but to, to you, Adrian, about Niles, mm. eh, Maitland Niles, where, mm. where yeah. do you see his future? He's kind of played sort of all over the place, left back, right back, bit of midfield. Where do you yeah. do, do you think he well, can be a player I, and where? I'm I'm as in the dark as you. I mean, yeah. He, uh. he, unfortunately, against Ostersons, he he didn't he didn't pass the audition, did he? Um, no, he, no, he, had no. opportunity, no. he had that opportunity to shine in midfield, and he was quite he was quite loose with his distribution. Um, I like him as a player, and I, I've loved him when he's been rampaging forward from fullback, mm, um, mm. and I like his confidence, very calm in possession. My, my one worry with Maitland Niles at the moment is that he's too chilled out. That he's a little bit, little bit too laid back. And if you're playing as a defender, you can't be laid back. You've got to be, you've got to be really on your toes 
and, and alert yeah. the danger. Yeah. So, so I think he's got a bit of work to do to get a regular place, but definitely a player of promise. Huh. Um, but, but yeah, time will tell, I guess, on, huh? on who Arsenal signed okay. this summer, where he ends up. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he, I, I, Hand on heart, I think he's some way off of nailing down central midfield. Could he cover? Could he cover Bellerin then? Yeah, well, yeah. I think I was just going to just going to touch on that. I don't know if um, I just think personally. Sorry to butt in, but with Maitland Niles, obviously, he began his career hard at the park, and when he when he went on loan to Ipswich, he, he obviously was playing on the right hand side of midfield, and it's very very strange for me that that he's been utilised defensively. I can understand that. But on the left hand side, on his unnatural side, and it's very, very difficult to defend on your, on your weak side. When you're going forward up the further up the park, it's not such an issue, but we saw games with Bellerin at left back and, and it just, it's so difficult to get your natural body shape to, to sort of mm. defend that other way around. You, you, you're stopping crosses yeah. differently. And you saw Maitland Niles, as, as well as he performed there, he got turned on far too many occasions. And that was just simply because. He's not defending on his natural side. He's, for me, his body shape was all wrong and, and the winger knows that and he just does one turn and he goes the other way and gets a cross in. And that's, that's where I'd like to see him utilise because he's, we all know his physicality is incredible, for, especially for his age. His, his recovery speed is absolutely mm. sensational. Like Someone like Kyle Walker, his whole game is based on his recovery speed and, he, and his speed going forward because he's not a very good defender. He's not very intelligent. But you can get away with it if you're in that area and that physical. So... Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd like to see him given a little bit of a chance down at, at right back as a, as a rotation for Hector to give him some rest. Okay. Right, Adrian, let's move on to the attackers. Yeah. Take well, it away. Yeah, my 4 3 2 one, look, no surprises here. I'd, I'd have Mikitarian and Urzu in behind uh, Obama Yang. Okay. Um, I, I just feel that, that Urzu and Mikitarian are, are both at their best often centrally yep. in terms of slipping balls through to the striker. But if you watch them during the course of a game, m- most of their touches are in the wide areas. So, yeah. so yeah. when Arsenal, when Arsenal do break forward, I would expect, you know, Mkhitaryan to, 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 to get wide and, and join in with Bay, Bayerin yeah. and the striker. And the same with Ozil, who, who kind of can pop up anyway. So I just think, yeah, those two. What I want, I want Mkhitaryan as well. I don't want him kind of hugging the touchline the whole game. So I think we've got to utilise his his chemistry with uh, with Aubameyang. So, yeah, I'd have Ozil and Mkhitaryan kind of free yeah. in that pocket between the lines. Um, at, and they will go wide. They will provide width on occasion. Yeah. And, and, yeah, Aubameyang gets the nod ahead of Lacazette, I mean, pace-wise. He is a slightly better striker, even though I, I think Lacazette is very good. And I think he will he will come good. Um, I, yeah, Aubameyang has got the edge yeah. right now. I was just going to say, well, what are your initial thoughts on Aubameyang? I know we've, we've only kind of seen him for a well, while. He's, he's rapid, so isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's rapid. He's, he's cool, cool as a cucumber in front of goal. Um, I want to see him get more touches. Yeah. Um, he... he what he, he needs, obviously, better service. I, the issue we've had in some of the games where he was he was non-existent is that Arsenal played really badly, and they didn't have any control of the game, and therefore he was feeding off scraps. I think when Arsenal are on song and when they're stronger down the spine, in control of a match, he will get the ammunition from the guys yeah. we're talking about, and Ramsey, and Wilshere, uh, and from out wide. Yeah. I think he's going to fly. But but yeah, it's it's not been amazing so far. But um, it, he's a bit different, yeah. and I think he's going to be, be very exciting. Okay, but you still think Lacazette certainly has a future here, and yeah, yeah. yeah look, strikers they can rotate. Yeah. you want to keep your strikers fresh, okay. and and also in the, we might see a four two two two, we might see uh, a three five two. I'd lo- I'd love to see it tried out, particularly. Yeah. Let's say. Stoke at home or Southampton at home yeah. in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. Southampton at home, let's try it. It's, yeah. We've got nothing to lose because yeah. the league position is kind of irrelevant now. Yeah. Um, I would like to see a bit of experimentation yeah. in that regard between now and the end of the season. Interesting. Um, Dave, I'll go to you next. Yeah, no, I would I would deck out that completely. I think uh, I would definitely play Mkhitaryan and Ozil just yeah. off uh, Aubameyang. Huh. Um, no question in my mind. I think the interesting thing on Aubameyang is whether this will evolve, I can't profess to be an expert on German football. But I don't, I can't remember the last time Arsenal actually played 
with a striker who literally was not going to do anything else. You know, he's not going to drop deep like Lacazette and get involved in the game. He's not going to do any. He literally is just going to play off the last match Eduardo, of the whole game. Eduardo, and I, I, well, Eduardo it may be Eduardo was... or, you know, Franny Jeffers even. Well, but and yeah. Eduardo did drop and get involved. He did a bit, more. yeah. I think with the Bamiang, I've got to get used to it because in my head, I look at him in a game where he doesn't touch the ball for 50 minutes and I find myself feeling bad for him. And then I just think, no, that's his game. <laughs> he literally is just going to run across the line waiting for that ball. And they, then, it, then as soon as we play that pass, he's going to be on yeah. it. There is not many, there's, not, there's not many defenders you know, in Europe, in the yeah. world, who are going to keep up with him. So, as Adrian okay. says, we have... We have two fantastic passers of the ball with great vision now in Ozil and Mkhitaryan. And I just, you know, it's, it's the, those three playing together is the thing that actually keeps me quite positive yeah. between now and the end of the season. It's just, in fact, it's the only thing that keeps me positive <laughs> between now and the end of the season. Uh, oh. Oh. but I do think, and I echo what Adrian said as well, I do think Mkhitaryan, uh, when he drifts wide, he, he, he can do damage as well. And one thing that's not been mentioned because it's not really part of the question, but isn't it great to have someone who can take a good corner? For the first time since <laughs> maybe Santi, and even he, he was inconsistent. Mkhitaryan's call has been fantastic. Mm. So it's you know whipping those balls in at pace. Even Ozil doesn't do that. So mm. yeah, great news. Okay. I really look forward to seeing him over the next few years. I was going to say, if you feel bad for Aubameyang having less touches, I hope you didn't watch Jamie Vardy the other night because you would have been crying. <laughs> was Yes, mate. I'd go You're with um, Danny Welbeck. Danny Welbeck <laughs> and, and Ed, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Cantor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. But I mean, uh, it, 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 obviously, it, it's, it goes without saying the two you're going to go go with. But I mean, yeah, why do you think it me, would though, work? Actually, why do you think it would yeah, work? Yeah. I think down the years, the majority of our centre forwards would have benefited from having someone with them. And the way modern football's moved, the, the four-two-three-one and the four-three-three and, and things like that. I mean. The fluidity, especially with four three three, that usually most teams have flying wingers and they have people that get up and get closer to the centre forward. And I feel Lacazette really surprised me because his quality on the ball wasn't what I expected. I thought he was going to be more of a, a sort of ex- explosive finisher. And 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 that guy can play football. He's so good. At, he's intelligent. His link play is phenomenal. And Abamyang just loves to be on that shoulder. And we saw, say even at Wembley, that that through ball when he was on side. That's what a Bamian gives you. That just that one second, that split second, that through ball from Jack Wilshere off the shoulder, he's in. And that's against Spurs, and, and they're, they're very good defensively. And, yeah. and if it weren't flagged yeah. offside, it could have been very different. Even in the cup final, he had got that opportunity, didn't he? Very early. Yeah, yeah. On Ozil. yeah. And um, a Bamian, he's always going to get you goals because he's so, so lively. But a Lacazette, obviously, he's a, he's a top striker, but he, like I was saying, he surprised me a lot. And, and when you look back through the years, I mean, Eduardo and Adi Bayor had started for yeah. one hell of a partnership. And, yeah. and I feel sorry for players like Giroud. And I feel for years I wanted to see something tried like Giroud and Theo or, or just, just try to, to try and get so the centre forwards are not so and isolated. San- Sanchez because, being closer to him might have been. Yeah. And, and, and funnily enough, last season, do you remember when we had, um, yeah. Ozil and Sanchez so close to each other, almost in a 4 4 1 1? And, and it, just having that, that, that partner there, that someone to play with, play off of, move with, move around. And, and Aubameyang's going to be very good at stretching defences. So the fluidity is there. The, the support is there. So they're not isolated. But again, it, it's, it's a very attacking, aggressive way of playing. And, and maybe it's not best suited for playing a big side like, <laughs> like we've touched on. But I personally love my attacking football. I love the way Arsenal used to approach games and, and it almost used to be that you're going to have to worry about us. We, we know yeah. your qualities, but deal with us. Yeah. And, and Arsenal haven't really been like that for a long, long time. But I do feel with the, with the kind of players we've got, obviously I would make certain changes to the squad, but with we've got at the moment, I, f- I feel with players like Mkhitaryan and Ozil, the creativity, you've got the, the, the pace and the burst from midfield with Ramsey and, and you can utilize this and become a very, very strong attacking team. And I'd like us to start frightening teams again because Far too often, teams have known how to, to nullify us. They'll keep us narrow, let the fullbacks come up and pick their chance on a break. And, and we're better than that. And I, I, I just want us to um, to try and, and give Lacazette and Aubameyang yeah, a chance yeah. to, to okay. go with the two. But that's just me. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. All right, I'm just going to ask one final question before we wrap it up. And it's, You've, you've got your, your, your ideal team, um, from, from our squad. You've got your, you ask who's, who's your manager's well, gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I'm not gonna open up that can of worms right now. Um, 
you've, you've got your formation. If you could upgrade two positions, which positions would they be? And we don't have to talk about personnel. We don't even have to talk about who you would want in, but what sort of a player. And that's not any disrespect to current players or, 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 or you know, whatever. It's more about in your particular formation, where would you have to kind of improve? And, and as I said, it doesn't mean the player's bad. It just means in that formation. Yeah. Adrian? Yeah, well, yeah for, well, for me, it's an easy, it's an easy one. It's definitely the defensive midfield position, and it's definitely centre half. Okay. Um, ah, you see, but you're forgetting the goalkeeper there, Adrian. You're well, the if, I, if you'd have given me three, it's only two. <laughs> for that reason, it's only two. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I just feel that they're, that they're the, they're the key positions, and I'll be, yeah, I'll be really surprised if if the club don't don't recruit. Really strong players in those positions. It's, it's overdue, really. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, was that to you next? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny. It's, it's funny though because if I could, if I could sign what I wanted to sign, I wouldn't be playing the formation that I chose. Mm. So I, I'd go. I'd sign a, an out and out wide forward, someone who's gonna pacey, aggressive, will beat a man, uh, attack their man, and and look exactly. It sounds funny to say it because he's the heat of the moment. But someone like Mo Salah, who's not saying him as a personnel, but someone in that ilk of a player, and I'd go four two three one then, and I would okay. because I feel that they could get closer to the striker. But in a four two two two, like I was saying, I'd probably go with a, a centre back and a keeper, or a defensive midfielder and a keeper. Okay, fine. All right. So that's three. It's, yeah. Well, it's, it's so true. Lo- losing <laughs> Ramsey or Shaka to Woz is like turkeys voting for Christmas. Uh-huh. Do with <laughs> Dave. <laughs> yeah, um, I would. Because I would stick with Koscielny and Mustafi for this season, because two, I would change the goalkeeper and buy an, have an out and out defensive midfield player. So a keeper and defensive midfield player for me. Okay, cool. That sounds interesting, Dave. Um, one, one, one very quick final question before we wrap up, and I promise this is the right one. If there was a player in the squad who's not made your team today, but you kind of think actually in a season or two they could make it, whether it's a young player, whether it's a, a Holding or a Chambers, whether, you know, uh, an Enketia or a Niles, who do you think is the one player that actually could make your team, but maybe just needs a little bit more? Maybe it's an Awobi or an El Nenny, I don't know, but Adrian, <laughs> we'll start with you first. Oh, it's, it's a real, that's a real toughie. Um, I think, <sighs> I'd like to see a bit more of Reese Nelson. I think he's an exciting prospect. He, he hasn't really grabbed the, the, his opportunities in the first team in the in the Premier League as yet. But I think he's a player of, of definite talent. Um, but pro- I'd probably go back to Maitland Niles because I think him at right back. I'd like to see him give it really uh, give Bayerin some competition because um, I'm yeah. as, as good as Bayerin can be. Uh, I think defensively there are still one or two flaws in his makeup. Um, so Maitland Niles can, I think, give give Bayer in a run for his money. Oh. And just just very quickly, Adrian, uh, Alex Awobi. What does Alex Awobi need to do just to get? I wouldn't say his career back on track, but just yeah. to you know, just just to keep developing and keep kind of you know, hopefully being the player he, he wants to be. What does he yeah. need to do score, this summer? Score more, score more goals. Yeah. Um, Create more goals. <laughs> and I, I think, I think, I think with him, I'd like to see him be a bit more dynamic. Sometimes he, he, he takes the easy option um, and, and can frustrate a little bit. Um, I liked him best when he first came into the side, where he played on the half turn, he received the ball, and he moved it on with a forward pass, a really early forward pass. What the habit he's got into now is he gets the ball. His first instinct is to run inside and lay it off to somebody else. And I yeah. think. I, I I think that causes elements of frustration because because it's quite an easy thing to do. Yeah. So so yeah, it's a bit more dynamism and to to move the ball quicker. Okay, cool. Dave, thirty seconds. Same question. I'll give the guy the, the, the guy I would love to see step up and, and really have a bright future is Rob Holding. Rob Holding. Okay, cool. Was yeah, Adrian touching it. I think Reese Nelson for me, the guy. He, he needs his opportunities higher up the park. I don't want to see him at right wing back. I, I need, for me, he's, he's far too creative. He, he's far too intelligent. He's got yeah. a lot of skill, a, a lot to give. And, um, a lot, it, it's just mad, just quickly on Alex Awobi. It's crazy that when, when he was at that level, just before reaching the first team, he had that season where he was almost playing centre forward and he was scoring goals for fun. Mm. And I, I don't understand where it's gone, whether it's confidence or, 
I just don't understand with him, but it'd be nice to see him kick on and, and start producing them moments like he has done for Nigeria yeah, and yeah. teams. It would be right. lovely to see him carry on. But yeah, definitely, I want to see Reese Nelson Reece, yeah. given that opportunity higher up the park in that one of them two that I spoke about. Yeah. That would be okay. nice. Cool. This Funny, time. there's an article on Gunnerstown tomorrow, Aka, where we've asked all our writers for their opinion on what's happened with Iwobi and, and you uh-huh. know, what his future holds. I haven't seen it. Paul's compiling it. Shameless I think plus, about eight or yeah. nine. Eight or nine, eight or nine different views on the won't be. So yeah. it'll be interesting. Really. Yeah, we're going to get the editor to edit your shameless plug out there. I'm afraid. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but I mean, Reese Nelson does have to sign a contract soon. By the way, I think he's only got a year left. But anyway, that's a discussion yeah. for another day. Adrian, I'd like to thank our our, our special guest, um, which was you. <laughs> so thank you for coming <laughs> on and sharing your insight. Thanks, yeah, no, Adrian. Thank- Thanks for the invite, invite, guys. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, look, hopefully we'll get to see some of these uh, lineups in practice between now and the yeah. end of the season. I think that's a really good shout about the sort of the Premier Leagues. It doesn't look like we're going to get any higher or any lower. It looks like we are going to, a bit like Man United last year, you know, they could lose three or they could win three. They'll stay sixth. And I think that's, that's sadly, that's the case for Arsenal this year. So it will be interesting to see what we do. Was Dave, thank you as always. Yeah, thanks Thank for having us. Thank you very much. And uh, Adrian, I hope, I really love the breakdown. I just want some more positive ones because we need to start winning games again, mate, because it's, it's hard, um, <laughs> it's hard watching an analysis of, um, of the your fault. It's all your fault. Mate. I, it's all my fault, yeah. <laughs> it's all your fault, but fantastic, I mate. Enjoy them. Yeah, uh, thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, look, I want, I want happy ones as well. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to have to practice my serious face too often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Guys, that's a wrap. Uh, thanks listeners for listening. Subscribe, comment, like, retweet, share, do whatever. You know, even tell us your team. Tell us why these three were talking rubbish or, or, or tell us what you agreed with. You know, it, it's, everyone's got an opinion. That's what football's all about. So good night and up the Arsenal. Cut the Arsenal. This episode of the Guna Ramble is sponsored by the new sporting betting app called Bookie. That's B-O-O-K-E-E. Sign up using the promo code podcast. Deposit and bet £10 in multiple bets for a free £10 bet. Please bet responsibly. 